everybody, and welcome to Live at Five. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd. I'm Caitlin Moynihan. And I'm Beth Stevens. And over there, we got Mr. Eric King. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was trying to do like a cool soccer intro. Good job. World, the World Cup. Yep, it's all it's happening. happening today. Go mm -hmm. USA. We got a really cool wizard here with us today, Beth. Who we got? Nicholas Padani is here Ooh. from Harry Potter. I feel like I should say it with a British yeah. accent. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Very exciting. I'll take it. I'll take, take that. It? Yeah, I'll, I'll work it. on it. You live I'll, there. Yeah, I'll take I'll it. I'll work on it. Yeah. So before I talk to him, we're going to do today's top five. This Emmy-winning HBO film is headed to the stage. So this is a little complicated. I'm going to walk you through it. It's got a lot of layers here. <laughs> There's a Liberace musical in the works. Now, we've been saying that since 2009 because there are a lot of people who want to make a movie, I mean, a, a musical, yes. a Broadway musical about Liberace because he has a fabulous wardrobe and it's a complicated true. love life. Thus, that's good material for a Broadway musical. <laughs> that's your show. That's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need. That's Cher, all you need. Cher, Liberace. Very, very good. Very good. Great. Thank you, Eric. So, Behind the Candelabra, which was on HBO mm -hmm. and won an Emmy, as Eric mentioned, has now. Uh, a producer has acquired the rights to that to make a musical. Important. Finally, that's David Permit, who is the producer. Now, mm -hmm. we don't have a creative team. We don't have a cast. We don't have a date. We, nothing. nothing. This is just something that's going on, but he does have the rights. He says he wants stage and screen star Bradley Cooper to play Liberace, and I, as I mentioned this morning, would love to be five nine and a half. <laughs> However, I like knows? that he's you throwing it out there into mm -hmm. the world, though. He's just putting it out they there. They are mentioning in a serious fashion that Christopher Ashley, the Tony-winning director of Come From Away, is eyeing the production. So that is possible. Love and it. of course, it's going to have its world premiere at the La Jolla Playhouse, where Christopher Ashley is the artistic director. So the pieces are falling into place. We've been talking <laughs> about Liberace <laughs> musicals for a long time. There are, there are many aspects to this. Just hang on to your hats, sparkly as they may be. And we've got one hell of a casting announcement. That's all. Oh, I was oh. waiting to see how you would do this. Time. I had a lot yeah, of options. He, you had a lot of options. He rehearsed that in the mirror. I love I that. Yeah. But yes, guys, we've been talking about the Devil Wears Prada musical for a very long time. And today we got word that there's some readings happening. We found out who are in those readings. And just it's a, the readings. Just the readings. Just the readings. Nothing crazy. Means but we're not invited. But get excited. But, but get excited <laughs> because this yeah. casting is absolutely unreal. So the share shows Emily Skinner. She is going to play Miranda Priestly, which is brought to life by Mer Meryl Streep, who is going to play Dee Dee Allen in the prom movie. That was a lot confusing. of connections. That was a lot of information. But basically, the share shows Emily Skinner is going to play uh, Miranda Priestly. Mean Girls, uh, Christina Alabato. She's currently Gretchen Wieners, but she's uh, playing Andy Sachs, who was Anne Hathaway in the movie. In the movie. Um, the other two star and former Live at Five guest, Helena York, and Broadway alum, of course. Of course. She's going to be playing Emily, which who Emily Blunt played. Fun. Just a lot of facts here. There are a lot of facts. Um, also, uh, Mara Cant. Cantone is going to play Nigel. Itai Benson is going to play Nate. Joe Lambert as Lily. Nicholas Christopher as Christian. Um, we're very excited Great about casting. this. Mario it's super Cantone, exciting. Yeah, on. Anna Di Shapiro is going to direct this. We, we already, already, already knew that. that. We mm -hmm. already knew that. We Who's already doing knew. doing the music? Elton John and Shana Taub, which just Who's doing the book? The book is Paul Rudnick, and Comedy everything genius, about it is Paul just Rudnick. Chef's Kiss. And I just hope <laughs> it all happens, please. And like so many of us, this musical is celebrating its first birthday at the Y. We're going to go out of order. So Pretty excited. Woman is going to turn one very soon. And their new stars who are coming in shortly, Jillian Mueller and Brennan Hunt. I like what I wasn't, you did that. I wasn't prepared to do this one. <laughs> it's fine. Here, do you want to? Will, no, it's all good. Will go to the 92nd Street Y, which is on the east side. Yeah. On 92nd Street. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. um, on July 31st at 8 o'clock with... Director choreographer Jerry Mitchell and co-star Eric Anderson. They will do a panel. Tickets for this anniversary celebration are now on sale. One, a year on Broadway is no small thing, people. Very and true. these are two new stars. They're replacing Samantha Barks and Andy Carl. And this beautiful standby is returning to her post. Oh, yeah. 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 So yesterday we found out that Kara Lindsay, she played her final performance in Beautiful, the Carol King musical, on Sunday, June 30th, because she's going on maternity leave because she's pregnant. Yes. That's so exciting. Um, and so it, Jessica Keenan Wynn, she's starting, she's going back into the musical as Cynthia Weil. 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 I should Weil. know how to say that. Okay. Cynthia Weil, she's going back. This is like her 
fourth or it's fifth time. It's revolving doors. Carol Lindsay, Jessica Keenan Wynn. Carol Lindsay. Lindsay Jessica, this is the second time yeah. that Jessica Keenan Wynn has gone in after Carol Lindsay. Just saying. and vice versa. And vice versa. So sure. we love it. Um, we're super excited. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily a time length for uh, Jessica right now, but she's starting back she's tonight. Great. So she's great in the role. Yeah, and Vanessa Carlton is playing Carol King herself. So it's go over, go see it. And this upcoming event has mm -hmm. us feeling blue in a good way. We're talking about Blue Man Group, this is kind of cool. So at the Museum of the City of New York, that's the name of the museum, Love they it. are doing an interactive installation of Blue Man Group, which of course has been downtown for a long, long time. It's an interactive installation, thus the group's iconic PVC pipe instrument, you know what they play, it's there and you can, it says hands on access, means you can play it. Uh, so you'll learn about the origins of the Blue Man Group, and you get to play the original instrument, and it's a two-month installation, and Blue Man Group will perform at Uptown Bounce. That's a thing. I love that. It's the museum's annual free summer block party series on August 7th. I'm going to tell you something about Blue Man Group. Tell me. When they're blue, they don't speak. Did you know this? You can't they interview them. They kind of scare me. They're awesome. Kind of they scary, won't spit but in at a you fun if, way. if you're nice to them. They won't spit at you. Did you know oh, that when nice. when when they like come out on stage, it's supposed to be like the first time they've ever seen the world. So every time they are painted blue, they're like being reborn. They are born anew, painted blue. Fun and born facts anew. here. Lots of fun five. facts. Keep that in mind when you go to the. We know exhibit. a lot about Blue Man Group here at Bravo.com. <laughs> we have a couple of other things other to tell you. Yeah, we got episode two of Michael James Scott's vlog, Life, Life in, in the, the Lamp. lamp. It's we all about pride all about this pride, week. pride, baby. Um, he did a really awesome job. He's a stellar vlogger. He knows what's up, so go watch He's it. He's magical. And we have a London Q&A. Andrew Langtree, who plays the dad named George in The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and three quarters. Very specific title. But in addition to talking about that musical, he also was in Groundhog Day, so he has some things to say about Andy Carl. And he was in Ghost with Casey Levy, so he talks about that star. So he's got his Broadway connections. I love that. Also, I will say, this is our last Live at Five for the week. It so is. happy Independence Day, everyone. But to celebrate that, James Snyder's Magic To Do vlog <laughs> backstage, and this is your segue, for Thank Harry you. Potter <laughs> and the First Child, Thank you. will drop, as the children say, on Thursday, July 4th. I'm out of here. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Thank you so much, Beth. I always love when we Anytime. get to do this together. <laughs> Eric, could you please tell us about today's guest? I would love to. Okay. Nicholas Padani is bewitching Broadway audiences as Albus Severus Potter in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which marks his Broadway debut. His screen credits include appearances on I Didn't Do It, Heart of Dixie, Panic, and more. He can be seen in the upcoming feature film, Summertime Dropouts. Follow him on social media at Nicholas Padani and leave all your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Caitlin and Nicholas. Hello. Hi. Hello. You're here. And with a massive Broadway.com mug. There you go. Just for you. <laughs> we made it just for you because we knew you were coming today. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are on Broadway. Yeah. You're in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Yes. How are you feeling right now? Oh, it's an absolute dream come true. I mean, it's I, I've been a fan of the books since I was six years old, you know. Love it. My mom would uh, read me to sleep with the books, Aww. so I always wanted to be a wizard. When I was 11 years old, my mom pointed out, it, it, the seventh book came out when I was 11, mm -hmm. and we read the epilogue, and my mom pointed out, she was like, you could play Albus in the movies. No way. You could play Albus in the movie. I'm like, I, I don't think so, mom. Look at mom. Look, Look at, at mom. mom. Look, Look at, at moms. Moms know best. This is proof number one. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay, because yeah. I was going to ask, I did do a deep dive stalking moment on your Twitter earlier today. Hey, oh you boy. don't really tweet that much. It was no. pretty easy. Yeah. But I'm trying to get into it. I mean, you, you have 140 characters. Or is it more now? It's more now. It's more now? It's more now. Okay. I don't know how much more, but I'm just very more. wordy, so I don't know if I could... You can shorten it. Just do a thread or something. A thread. Yes. But basically what I was going to say is you, I saw like in 2013 or something you tweeted about a horror. Oh, you did a I deep did dive. Deep dive. It was easy. What did I like say? You just saw um, a bumper sticker that had a Harry Potter. So I was going to ask about, you know, how long have you loved Harry Potter? What was your intro to it? Yeah. Um, Give me that Harry Potter story. Oh, man. I mean, I, I watched that first movie every day um and then you know i'd reread the book well i wouldn't reread my mom would read to me the books and mm -hmm. she's um originally from england so she would do all the accents and everything she'd do the dialects Perfect. so that's how i started learning um you know dialects and everything and that's sort of what got me into acting was she was like 
doing these stories and uh, I wanted to do that and I wasn't very good at sports. So, <laughs> so, I, so I figured, and I had all this energy and my parents just were like, let him do something. So I got into acting when I was, I mean, I was six and okay. I had a very ambitious director <laughs> who made us do Twelfth Night at six years old, all of us were six, mm. like in a first grade kindergarten production of Twelfth Night. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where and did so, you play? oh, I was Duke Orsino. Oh, of course. I went up on stage in a of very high pitched voice and said, it, "Music be the food of love, play on." And uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, it was so that great. was your shining moment. Yeah, I really peaked then. Is that when you peaked? Yeah. I think so I think that, that was, was your it. peak moment. I think I think that was the one. <laughs> no, but then you know, I I, I went on acting because it was it was fun and mm -hmm. it was what I enjoyed doing, uh, but I never really thought of it as a career until I was about 15, mm -hmm. and I was in this show um, in L.A. I grew up in L.A., yeah. and um, uh, I was in this show. It's the first time it was ever being produced, and okay. so I was working with a writer. It was a two-person play, basically a two-person play about a mom and a son, mm -hmm. very dramatic, and at the end of one of the performances, a guy came up to me and said, um, I'm going to call my son, who I haven't talked to for five years, because of this play. Ooh. And I was just, I, I mean, the drama. What a compliment. But, but, but it, I mean, more than a compliment to me, it was also a compliment to acting and to the play mm. and to just what we do. And I, I figured if, if, I can, if I can be a part of that, mm -hmm. you know, if, if that's what people are telling me I can do, mm -hmm. and if it can do that, then uh, that's what I'll do, you know, the, in a very roundabout way. But, Amazing. Um, yeah. And then you went to Juilliard. Yeah. Easy peasy, right? Easy peasy, Just like that. Easy peasy. Yeah. I really didn't want I really didn't want to go. Why didn't you want to oh, go? Oh man, oh this is bad. Because um, it's Juilliard. Yeah, because I thought I thought, you know, uh, first time I ever heard of Juilliard was in the movie August Rush. Do you remember August Rush? <gasps> what a great It's Freddie becoming Highmore. a musical. What? Yeah, it's in Seattle. Yeah. It's in Seattle. Oh boy. No, nope, yeah. it's not in Seattle. Seattle. It's Atlanta. It's somewhere else. It's somewhere else, but it's playing right now. <laughs> Making its yeah world premiere this summer. Just wow! Oh my goodness! There you go. Yeah. So I mean, I, I saw that movie, and uh, you know, they brought up Juilliard, and how apparently it was this amazing music school. Mm -hmm. So that's I just immediately thought it was a music school. Then, in middle school, I was in a drama class where my teacher, um, someone asked. They had a scene where they brought up Juilliard, mm -hmm. and they asked, um, you know, teacher, I have, I have a question. Uh, what's Juilliard? And my teacher just went, "You never <laughs> ask that question." You know what Juilliard is. You just must know. You should never ask <laughs> what Juilliard is. And I went, oh, wow, that's what? intense. That's and aggressive. So I thought, I always assumed Juilliard was this elitist, weird place. Mm -hmm. And then I took a tour of it, and the steps were uncomfortable to walk down in this one city. So I was just like, ah, no, 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 not for me. Um, because the steps were uncomfortable. It Juilliard was just, was it was, I, I already had a preconceived notion. Got and it. if you've ever been to Juilliard, there are these red stairs, and they're just the bane of my existence when trying to get to class. They, you All don't right. know if you're supposed to take two steps, one step. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I was huge turnoff, and I was like, nope, not for me. But I will audition just to see how far I get. Okay. And when I auditioned, Richard Feldman uh, started off a warm up before anybody auditioned, mm -hmm. and he just said, look. It's so rare that we as actors get to do what we love, mm. which is to tell stories. That is so rare mm. that we're allowed to have space, to have time out of our everyday lives to do what we love. So just take a moment and, and love this experience. Mm -hmm. That was so cool. And I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, that's like, oh I like that's, this that's, here. That's, okay. that's kind of nice. All right, I guess I'll, I guess I'll try out. And um, yeah, one thing led to another. Uh, they have a callback weekend where you know you go for two days mm -hmm. to New York and take classes. And I fell in love with it. Mm. I found Moni Yakim, all these amazing, amazing teachers mm -hmm. who, I, over the course of the past four years, I've learned so much from. Amazing. Yeah. That's a tangent about. Yeah. No, it's okay. Juilliard's great. It's and now great. you're now um, you play Albus Potter and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, right? <clears throat> Apparently. Apparently. I sort of just black out every night and just sort of wake up and so, act like a call. What are you allowed to tell me about your audition process and how you oh, I got a, to this point? I had a bunch. I had a bunch of auditions. I basically started auditioning as soon as I graduated um, in June. Okay. I started auditioning then. I think I had three auditions and a huge break. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, we'll call you back in September. I was like, okay. Sure. Why um, not? Some other stuff came up. In fact, I, th there was there was one job, and I was right out of school, and it was a good-paying job, and I it sounded really great, but 
there was still the idea of Harry Potter, so I said no to a job out of school, and it was very scary. And uh, unsure footing, and mm -hmm. then I had these, I think it was maybe four or five more auditions. Wow. The last two of which were with John Tiffany. Mm -hmm. um, and after my first audition with John Tiffany, I called my mom down on the street, and I was like, I think I might actually stand a shot at this. Wow. And we both just kind of screamed for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was really, really lovely. It was a lot of movement. Yeah. It was a lot of acting. Yeah. It was movement and then acting mm -hmm. in one day. That was a tough one. It's a good time. Oh, it was a great time. And so you screamed just when you thought you got it. So just, how did you react when you actually got it? Oh, I was I was um, I was filming a, a a pilot, and in the pilot, I have to um, I have to kill myself. Okay. Like that's how the entire mm -hmm. series starts. It's it's a it's Spoiler. a complicated thing, and it's and it's getting made. But whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that they were setting up for the shot where this really dramatic thing is happening, okay. and I'm like prepping to cry, and then I check my phone, and I have this group voicemail from all my agents and I called them back and they said, you got it. And I said, what did I get? They said, Elvis. I said, where? They were like, Broadway. <laughs> and uh, then I called my mom seven times because she was in the middle of teaching a class. Mom, pick up your mom, phone. Come, come on. on. They never pick um, up their phone when you really need when them you really to. really need them. I'm just saying. Um, I told her, mm -hmm. screamed, called my sister, told her. She said, oh my God, I just found out I'm pregnant. And I was like, Whoa, okay. Whoa, okay, October it's a 4th. contest. Okay. October, no, I mean, <laughs> October 4th, 2018 was, wow. was, was a day. Wow. It was a big day, big, big, big day. And, and yeah. How long have you guys, you guys have been in it for how long now? Uh, we've been performing for three and a half months. How's it going? Half. Oh, great. Um, so, ah, really, really lovely. You, I mean, this is by far the longest I've ever done anything mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, of, you know, performances. And I, I thought there was going to come a point, and you know, th there may very well come a point when uh, I have to find new things, mm -hmm. like consciously to get into the play. Mm -hmm. And granted, there are some there are some mornings where I'll wake up, be like, oh, just an extra hour of sleep, please, mm -hmm. please, 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 please. But as soon as we start, as soon as we start that show, and you feel the energy of the audience, and you know that. Just how I used to stand outside mm. for the midnight book releases. Kids have been yeah. just like waiting for this. Yeah. And I am still one of those kids. Mm. And it just like, you, you feel that immediately. And mm. it's nothing else compares. Mm. Some things compare. Finding out your sister's pregnant right. and is having a baby definitely compares. Like she was just born Vivian Ray O'Kelly. She's oh, so beautiful. I love nieces. I have two nieces. That really? Yeah. This is my first niece. Oh my gosh. I oh, it... love being okay. We'll talk about okay, that later. Well, yeah. <laughs> so we'll get started. Right. Before we get to your questions, I do yeah. have one. You tweeted out that you couldn't stop laughing on stage at Bubba's wig. <laughs> can I can I know that story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? I just um, need to know oh, what happened man. with the wig. I felt so, first, let me preface this. I felt so bad. As soon as I, as soon as the, the whole event happened, I went off stage. It was the second to last scene, and it was Bubba's last Ooh, scene in the play. Yes. This is like the conclusion of his arc. Like, yes. this is his moment. moment. And I just couldn't stop laughing, and I felt so horrible. And I went off stage, and James Snyder playing Harry Potter was like trying to comfort me and like being like, no, it's okay. Yeah. Like, this happens. It's fine. They, like, this is why live theater live exists. Theater. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I was terrible. I was terrible. I went down uh, uh, downstairs to my dressing room, and I was dreading for Bubba to come back in. And he came back in, and I was like, I'm so sorry. He was like, dude, that was amazing. <laughs> and we both just had a moment about it. So yeah, thankfully, I can like talk about it now. Yeah, it was like a, a good moment. No, basically, he's just. Um, Did it fall? Did no, it? No, 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 no. It was like, like you, you know the Adventures of Tin Tin? You know, like. Just the one um, little. The, like, yeah. like it's like straight like up. Like alfalfa. Yes. So it was just straight up. <laughs> And he was talking to me at the bottom of the stairs, and I'm talking to him, and I'm noticing, and people in the audience are definitely starting to notice. Like, I mean, back row is starting to notice. <laughs> and so I'm like, I gotta, I gotta stop this. So he comes up the stairs, and we have a moment where I'm in close proximity, so I try just to really just subtly like, just like flatten his hair, casual. and it just pops right back up. No! <laughs> and people start laughing, and I start getting like a thing oh. in my throat of just, I can't stop, and then I look at him, and his eyes are just like he has no idea Aww. what's going on, and that just made me break, <laughs> and I just couldn't stop laughing. And then you know people kept laughing, feeding it, yeah. And so then you know I'm trying to finish the scene, trying to keep it down. Oh. There comes another moment where I can flatten his hair, and it pops right back up again, and it's over. It was just yeah, but like. It was, theater. It, was, it was lovely. Theater. It was lovely. People that performance got a very special, unique performance yeah. that nobody else got. 
It's amazing. Live theater's <laughs> great. Harry Potter is great. I'm so nervous about this. <laughs> about nervous about what? <laughs> the wig. <laughs> the mm. wig. Eric, do you, what is it the fans asking over there? Okay. So, okay. yes. Um, Brian would like to know. Brian. How do you keep the energy up uh, between part one and part two on, say, <laughs> a two show day, which is unlike other Broadway actors' two show days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're 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 continuing the same narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so that's the tough thing about that is that like you're not just going back and um, starting from the beginning. Mm. You have to kind of yeah. carry over the momentum yeah. that you created in the in the in the first part. Um, it, I mean, it depends. We have a tradition, um, me and three of the other cast members, every Sunday we order Chinese food and sit down and play Settlers of Catan. Great game. Um, oh. Right? Great game. Gets a bad rap. Gets it's a bad a, rap. I Everyone's mean, like, oh, it's nerdy. And I, I mean, now yeah, I, whatever. I just, whatever. It's amazing. Own it. It's fine. It's so fun. And I had never played it before this, and mm. I have yet to win. Yeah, it'll take a while, probably. Yeah, it's a hard game. It is. Yeah, it's but hard. so 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 that's so that's one way is you know just sort of keeping the energy up, but not in the same vein because then you know at the same time of talking about uh, you're trying to keep the momentum going. If that's all you're focused on, mm. you're absolutely wiped by the that's time true. you get to part two. So it's it's a it's a variance of um, going out, taking a walk, eating food, napping, playing a game. I don't know. Whatever you can. Those four things, and you'll be set. And you're set. That's, that's your way. <laughs> that's that's your way, babe. <laughs> okay. A lot of people are asking. We love an onstage mishap, but like, it, it, could you like tell us without like revealing too much about like what happens and the tricks and stuff about a mishap that may have happened and like if there's a backup plan if things go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Um, most. Th yeah. So this being a magic, magical show. There's magic in this. <sighs> Doesn't Perfect. sound right. right? Doesn't sound. Yeah. Doesn't add up. It's not a musical. <laughs> I'm gonna squash that. Do it's not a musical. It, do people? A lot of people ask me how many songs I have. Really? And I just say seven. Just go with it. Yeah. Why not? It's a solid number um, of songs. But, right. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no, no. So instead of songs, you have these magic tricks. And we weren't hired as magicians. We had an amazing uh, magic coordinator named Skylar Fox. He cool. was incredible. But things do go wrong. Most of the time, we have stuff to like uh, prepare us for that going wrong or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there just isn't. And, and, and Bubba and I have been in multiple situations where we're just sort of standing there and going, <laughs> okay, how are we gonna, how are we gonna get by this one? And invariably, it, the, the thing we were taught is, is if something goes wrong, just stand still and someone will tell you what to do. <laughs> you know, because like <laughs> most of the time yeah. you're in more danger if you're trying to fix it. So yeah. like, yeah. But um, but that being said, I mean, it is remarkable mm -hmm. how many times it feels like I, I've just completely botched the show on stage mm. by doing something wrong. And it, it inevitably, people are so taken along by the narrative, so taken along by the mm -hmm. magic that they don't even notice, which is great. Yeah. But um, I really don't know if I can say more than that. Yeah. So there is a backup plan. Most of the time there's a backup plan. Sometimes it's just this, sometimes there have been things that are just sort of out of left field that no one predicted yeah. would happen. And you just go with it. Yeah. If you're yeah. ever at a show and they're just standing like this, don't oh, be no. alarmed. Don't be alarmed. We it's always fine. have a backup skull in our back pockets and just start <laughs> Hamlet. Yeah. Hamlet. <laughs> Whenever that happens, it, it comes in handy. Yeah. That's okay, amazing. we've got one final one uh, from Leah. Hi, she Leah. asks, what was the most interesting realization you had about Albus as you were creating your own version of the character? Yeah. What a question. No, amazing. Yeah, because I'm, so I'm taking over for Sam Clement, who mm -hmm. did a beautiful job with the yes. character. He was in the original London company. Mm -hmm. He was in the original Broadway company. Um, and so I'm taking over for the person who sort of originated, you know, he was working with the writers. He yeah. was, and, and did such a lovely job. Um, but I also got the privilege of watching him. Mm -hmm. And first time through watching his Albus, I was like, oh, that's amazing. I can never do that. That is something I, can, I can't touch because mm -hmm. that's just not me. Yeah. And so I found uh, during the audition process and way more into um, rehearsing that uh, Albus is often depicted as an angsty, angry, upset guy, which, you know, Fair. 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 But I, you know, I started looking uh, more into his Weasley roots, mm -hmm. uh, into um, Ginny, 
who's wow. one of my favorite characters of all time. And that's his Best mom. Best literary character. You know, like, that's his mom. They don't have many interactions in the play, but that's his mom. Mm. And I, I think the silence between the two of them speaks miles more than the dialogue Harry and Albus have because I think that goes to show that she actually knows that Albus just needs um, yeah. needs that because he's, I've, I've said this before, he's an, um, an introvert born into an extroverted family. Yeah. Um, hmm. He's a, he's a, you know, he's, he's different. Yeah. And I think um, when I did research onto Ginny and the Weasley side, I found that Albus is like a, a hilarious, funny, wonderful, generous being. Mm -hmm. But it's as though, it's that moment in the second film where Ginny runs down the stairs and she goes, Mom, have you seen my jumper? And then like, sees Harry and goes wide-eyed and slowly backs up and like goes, <laughs> runs back up the stairs. It's as though you, Albus is in that moment of going wide-eyed at mm -hmm. his dad, but everyone has locked the doors, isn't letting him leave, and is asking him questions. Hmm. And is like demanding that he, um, hmm. that, that, he that he expresses yeah. what he already knows. Yeah. I mean, I think every scene, the only thing Albus wants to say is, I love you. Hmm. I think that's the biggest part of him. Wow. But he can't. Yeah. And I think that's, I, that's been so much fun to play. Wow. Yeah. Write a book about it. I'd read it. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Yeah, Next thing. <laughs> there you go. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, this thank you. This is a great time. Everybody, if you haven't seen Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, parts one and two, what are you doing? <laughs> go see it. If you've already seen it, go see it again. <laughs> Just keep saying it. It's great. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, thank you very much. Eric, thank if you, you could take us out. I would love to. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday on Facebook, except for in the summers when we're not live at 5 on Friday. Excuse me. Um, have a great 4th of July week and stay safe, but we are not going to be here for the next three days, so Woo! tune in next week when we come back with uh, more of your Broadway faves. <laughs>